Hey guys, what's happening? So, obviously I have a problem here. The axle's put out, but... Yeah, I was actually replacing this, uh... I had a welder new shock tower on there. I had, uh, broken them off a couple of years ago. So I finally wanted to get this. I got the offer up, these two shocks and offer up. Um, actually, 100 bucks for two for a pair. Pretty nice. I said the new ones are thick, man. But yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's how you know it's Jeep branded. It's, um, it's a Fox shock, obviously. But it um, has that cool, you know, the cover, the protector. But yeah, I actually have a rear uh, disc brake conversion. That was, I actually noticed all this when I was pounding this in place. Yeah, my fluid started to leak here. Let me show you my axle. So this is uh, the original axle. I don't know if it's the original bearing or not. I replaced, I'll show you the other one. I replaced um, the other one like a Yukon axle, my um, passenger side, about 10 or 15 years ago, I can't remember. Still have the axle though. But look at the bearing separated. <laughs> the retainer, you can see that right there. Yeah. You can see like the... So what happened was it kind of got out of place and allowed the the oil to start leaking out. So if the oil would have not, never like leaked out, I wouldn't have known the bearing was so bad. Like it didn't feel bad, you know, I was shaking the tire, but glad I saw it. I mean, I'm glad that happened, you know. I wasn't driving around like that. Now obviously this has been failed for a while, but look, at, look how dirty it is inside. Um, plus the bearing is, it's, it's loose. Yeah, definitely not good. But the retainer's all the way in there, so. Well, it wasn't a complete fail. Let me show you my uh, other axle. That's my 4 70 w right there. I got to put in the Bronco eventually. Um, I got to rebuild it and everything. But all right, so here's the original axle. These are uh, 1966 Bronco, um, 28 spline, small bearing. But yeah, I'm guessing those. I don't know if they're original. I mean, probably the original bearings. About that. But yeah, I'm about to replace the bearings. Um, they sent me the wrong uh, uh, retainer, bearing retainer. What's weird is it says that this is the small, 9 axle bearing, small bearing, 3 8 But then, this is, this is actually a Yukon gear. But this is the large bearing one. You can tell by it has a half inch hole, it's not 3 8 inch. So what they sent me looks totally different than I had in the picture. Plus it's in the wrong packaging, so. Uh, weird, so I got some Timken bearings. Um, Timpkins are kind of hit or miss, you know, like quality wise. Like, uh, this one's made in Taiwan, the seal. But thankfully, the bearing's made in Japan, so, right there. But it doesn't have, I think usually the logo would be like the, the silver, kind of like a sparkly pattern. Alright, so I gotta take these bearings off. Um, I'm not gonna put the factory retaining plate back on there. I might have uh, another one of these Yukon ones, but. The cool thing about the bearing press, man, is it's like, it's, yeah, it's a headache because I have to store it, you know, but surprisingly, I use it a couple times a year. And every single time I use it, I'm happy I have it. But, yeah, it's a headache having to store it, but. Alright, so, I'm going to have to get those bearings off, and I do actually have a tool, which um, I will show you how I get the bearings off. It's like a tool that wraps around the axle. It's actually specifically designed for pulling bearings. But I'm about to lower it and get the axle in place. So all right, so here's a closer look at the bearing. I mean, look at that play. Even though there should be a seal on the back of it, so it's supposed to be a sealed bearing. So yeah, not looking good. Yeah, you know, what's funny is that when I replaced the other one, I didn't have a. I don't think I had this bearing press at the time, you know, and I didn't really have the other one. The the sealing surface was kind of jacked up, like where the the oil seal goes, like right there. So it was quicker for me just to buy home. I mean, back then they were a lot cheaper too. I think I spent a little bit over a hundred, but it was a Yukon gear. It's like somewhere around a hundred bucks back then. That was already built, you know, with the studs. It was just you, you'd buy it. It was a quick swap. I could just throw it back in there. Um, it was already completely assembled. So, um, but yeah, they've got them priced on there now. They're like like two hundred bucks, you know. So um, yeah, I'm gonna just do the bearings on this one. It was like fifty bucks for the bearings. Well, with the retainer. It was like uh, I had the bearing, the seal, and the retainer was like 50 bucks. So pressing on the bearings is going to be a lot easier than taking them off. I just don't know how I'm going to get this on there. You know, I have these tools I just to get it up around. Hmm. Alright, so I'm trying to think of a way to 
get them pull off, but I might just cut these because it's going to take me longer to figure out a. I mean, I'm sure I could figure out some way of wrapping that thing around with bolts and. Um, and every single video I've seen online is people just cut them off, but I don't know. Um, yeah, once you cut yeah, them off, they're, it, because the metal's so hard, you know, it, it also makes it brittle. Um, and look at those balls. <laughs> I mean, too bad I don't have a wrist rocket. Uh, those make perfect, like, slingshot wrist rocket balls. Um, I guess I'll break it off. I wonder what brand this is. Well, I'll clean it up and we'll look, see what brand of bearing this is to know if it's actually a factory or not. Well, I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or not. I didn't even... I mean, it's slightly cut here, but... I don't think that bearing is supposed to be, like, riding on the shaft again. I don't know. So, here is the bearings I took off. It's AW207YY. I guess BCA? I'm not sure. I mean, I've had this Bronco for over 20 years. I guess like 22, 23 years. And... I've never touched this axle, but like I said, I replaced the other one probably 10 or 15 years ago. Um, the only issue with that one was just like it wasn't sealing. Like the surface area where the seal sat down had a pitting in it, so it wouldn't actually create a seal. Um, I guess I could have sleeved it, but I had this thing in the back of my lathe. I was going to turn it, but I couldn't fit it all the way through, you know. I was going to reverse fit it, but I mean, the chuck was a little bit, uh, it's a buck chuck in the front, but... I had this thing converted to CNC. Hit everybody does about it, but I went back and I just polished the surfaces here where the seals go. Yeah, that's usually where it fails. See that little divot right there? I mean, once that thing gets worn out, I mean, the thing can no longer hold up. You know, the gear roll back. So, I mean, you can actually sleeve these things, but it's that's actually why I had to do the uh, when I replaced the other axle. I had to replace it because this thing had got was all pitted up and thrashed. So. I think this one will be fine. I think this might be pretty good. Because um, remember when I showed you I took it off? It was like spinning on the inner race here. And it's not a race, but the, on the inner ID, internal diameter of this thing. At least now, at least this one feels tight. I mean, I haven't pressed it down yet, so it might be tighter. Don't know, but... Um, but this is tight. Yeah, I mean, at least it's not like loose on there like the other one was. Right, so, the right backing plate, retainer plate came in. So I'm gonna press these things on. Oh, got a good seat. Yeah, there's no gap, so that's good. So I don't know what was up before. Like the bearing had become loose on the on the shaft. Because why else would I have a rust in between the gaps, you know? It's, I don't know. Um, at least it was able to, it feels like it's tight. The press is on there tight and not spinning around on there. All right, uh, get this mount in there. All right, so I got to pop a new tool on, or a new seal on here. I'm gonna use this to pop it on. Right, so one thing here I'm gonna do is like loop up the seal. Um, because once this thing is going, the oil itself will keep the seal lubricated, but you don't want to have a dry seal running on this metal. It will tear that thing up in two seconds. Okay, so I'm going to grab a rubber mallet and bring it in a little bit more. But I still need to get my uh, disc brake on there. Alright, so here it is. So you have the circle spacer, the, the uh, caliper uh, bracket here, and then that little square bracket. Alright guys, here it is. That's how you replace a small bearing axle, 9 inch, 4 9 inch, early Bronco. Yeah, this thing's been my daily driver for like 20 years. Um, Alright guys, cool. Hopefully this video helps somebody.